Hello again, Tom from Never Center. Uh, I want to show you in this video the new things that we've added in Pixel Mash Beta 5, which is the newest beta that we've just released. It's available for free download on our site right now. And as always, um, while it's a free beta, you can buy a, a pre release license um, for 15 bucks, and uh, that will convert to a full license when uh, we officially release Pixel Mash. So you can get a great deal on that right now. Um, but for now, it's totally free. Um, and uh, let me just show you the main thing that we've added here. I just hit uh, the spacebar button to enable this animation is uh, animation support. And you can see we've got an animation tab right here with frames, um, animation duration, and I can play and pause the animation right here. So let me put that back to frame one. Uh, let me show you how this octopus is constructed. I'm going to toggle off the pixel preview here. This is what I've actually drawn, which is this, this is very simple. If I um, click and hold on these layers, you can see what's in each layer. Just really kind of uh, lame drawn layers because I'm not a great artist. But um, as I turn on the pixel preview mode and uh, the layer effects, so you can see, um, here's what it looks like, just pixelized without the layer effects. I've added an outline. Um, the colors right here, it's very similar to the window color, so it's hard to see. And I've added this colorize effect where I can just change the color of, of him altogether, and I had that as a sort of a greenish octopus kind of color. Um, and I've, like I said, I've done this in each of these layers individually. Um, and one of the, the things that we've added is this. Um, masked brush tool that will make a lot of this painting easier. So let me just show you, for example, how I would make this this layer right here um, using these new tools. So let me delete this layer. So now there's no more leg right there. Uh, and I'm going to add a new layer, put it right back where it was, name it L1 again. And let's use our new tools to draw this layer. So uh, if I just use C to get that color right there, then um, I'm just going to paint in sort of an octopus leg looking kind of thing. Um, and now this new masked brush tool, what this does is if I uh, select this shadow color we've used elsewhere, the masked brush tool, it lets me paint without worrying about where I'm painting and it will only draw within the lines already in the layer. So you can see this layer I've already drawn in this part right here. And as I do this tool, if I want to just do a shadow, um, this tool lets me paint and it will keep it within the lines that I've already drawn there. So for a lot of things it will be easy to draw basically the, uh, the, the uh, outline of what you want and then you can use this tool to paint within those outlines. And so for the kinds of pixel art things where you want to shade a layer that makes it really easy to do. And maybe I'll just erase this to make it a little bit more pointy at the ends. Then now we've got a, uh, a layer. I'm gonna, I don't love this how it is. Let me just draw this in a little bit further. All right, that looks more like our, our other octopus leg layers. Um, but of course, with the, the beauty of pixel art, when I turn on the pixel art effects, uh, my terrible drawing skills become somewhat less relevant. Uh, right there. Now we've got a, a new octopus leg. Um, and uh, just in terms of drawing tools, let me just show you really quick. I'm just going to put in another layer here um, just to show this. Uh, one of the things that we've added is a, um, a dithering layer effect. Let me turn off the, uh, the master layer effect so that this is more clear what's happening. So I added this new layer here. Um, if I paint it in, uh, say, this uh, shadow color, I'm just going to paint on here. And this is going behind his head, so um, let me just pull this layer above his head. Uh, actually, let's paint in a, a different color to make this more obvious. Let me paint it in red. Maybe this is a really terrible hat. Um, with the dither layer effect, uh, it just it dithers the layer that I've just drawn. And so there are different percentages that I can do. Um, they use different dithering patterns. If I translate this layer, you can see it's just it's 
it's transparent. It's dithering between what is already in the layer and transparency. You can see I didn't paint over every dark gray thing I made there. Let me just do this. All right. Um, and so this can be uh, useful for, uh, you know, if you want to do shading with dithering, I could shade or basically draw over something existing and then erase it so that it's just dithering over the top of his body right there. And I can um, use other layer effects if I want to change the, uh, the color of this. Whoops, let me uh, add colorize. And let's colorize it to like a dark there. I've sort of shaded half of his head with a dither pattern. And like I say, I can, can change the dither pattern. Um, but anyway, there's a lot you can do with that. I won't go into that in much more detail. Let's uh, get rid of this layer and go to the animation tools. So let me re-enable um, the layer effects that make this guy look more like an octopus. Now let's talk animation. Now you can see in this animation panel, I've got three different frames here. Um, I can add a frame with this plus button, so it just duplicated frame three. So now you can see when I go between frame three and frame four, they're exactly the same. Uh, but let's go back to the three, three frames that we already had. I can use the left and right arrow keys to quickly go through these um, and hit this play pause button to automatically uh, play through the animation frames. Uh, Spacebar is a keyboard shortcut for that. And so you can see that the leg that I just drew, I haven't set up any animation for it. And so it's just sitting there staying still between the frames. Uh, but how I animate it, these, these frames respect layer transforms and visibility. And so um, this was layer L1. So I'm on frame two right now. So if I toggle off visibility right there, you can see that as I go to frame two, it just, that leg just doesn't show up, but it's still there on frames one and frame three because I only toggled off the visibility for frame two. And so if you wanted to, you could make a whole animation just um, using visibility and I could set up say three or four frames and three or four layers and then just make each layer visible on that frame and then just hand paint in the animation frames. But um, with, uh, with Pixel Master's resolution independence, uh, it makes it so that you can use transforms uh, to animate things, which can make it a lot easier to do pixel art animation than it has historically been the case. So uh, let me go to the transform tool. And then just on each frame, I'll just put this leg sort of, I can rotate and scale and just transform it how Ever I think looks good and it uses updates all the layer effects uh, in real time so that um, my not great animation or drawing skills I can make a pretty cool looking octopus animation there if I turn off the layer effects you can see what's happening under the hood on each layer doesn't look that great but with the layer effects turned on uh, it looks pretty awesome and so now let me just start in playing um, and I can go and I can edit any of these layer effects. The layer effects themselves are not um, part of the animation. Uh, uh, it's not storing those per frame. And so I can change his colorization, for example, and it will just update that and um, play that on each animation frame. And so I can change these while he's animating, which is really fun. Um, if I wanted to add new layer effects, like another outline layer, uh, and change its color. Um, I can do that while he's animating and uh, see that update all in real time. Or the like the pixelization level of this whole document. Um, I can see what he looks like at higher and lower resolutions. And he's sort of tuned to look good at uh, this 51 by 51 pixel resolution. Uh, so let me just pause that. Like I say, I can change the duration here. If I hit, uh, if I put it to 0.5, you can see he animates much quicker. I kind of like him at maybe 0.8. Let's try that. That's pretty good. Um, and I can export these one frame at a time and set up a sprite sheet that way. We'll probably, we'll definitely add at some point a way to automatically export a sprite sheet. But uh, right now you can just export individual frames as PNGs or whatever. 
But one thing that we did add um, is to export it as an animated GIF. Um, and so uh, let me just up this to 500, just to make it simple. So if I export this as an animated GIF, it's going to use the background color that is in the document already because GIFs don't have transparency. But if I come and open this up, you can see that it made this like um, 500 by 500 pixel animated GIF of my octopus. And uh, let me just change the background color and export it again just so you can see if I want to have a different background color back there. Maybe there. Um, maybe it keeps going down slightly below 500. We'll have to fix that. But uh, replace that. And then now this animated GIF has that background color, my dancing octopus. So it's a really fun tool. Um, and there are a lot of things that we can do to improve this. So uh, go download the free beta and use this in the help menu, this send feedback. And uh, that will let you email us feedback about what you think we can put in next. We're excited to hear what you think. Thanks.